Greetings, this is Sean, and today I'm going to be making this floor lamp that's going to be going into my book nook that I made last week. Um, it's not its not going to be quite finished in this one. You can see that it actually does light up there. I've got it plugged into a USB cord. But I've got to get some parts today from Hobby Lobby to finish it, and then I'll also finish the uh, book nook as well. So this is just a short one until I get the book nook finished, which will probably be Wednesday. So anyway, enjoy. Welcome back, and uh, I'm really, this is only two or three parts that it's, it's going to take to make this lamp, actually about four or five, anyway, um, I have this uh, copper tube here, and it's a one eighth inch thick, or uh, in diameter copper tube, and that little brass piece, or copper piece that you see, I don't know exactly what it is, my wife had it, and she was going to make flower pots with them, and I took one of them with her permission, of course, to make this lamp with. So here I am just deciding, I want it to be about six feet tall, and it ends up being about five and a half, or inches tall, six inches tall. And it ends up being about five and a half inches tall, roughly, with the stand and the bend that I make in it. And this one here, I'm actually going to show how I do the bending of the copper of the tubes. I have, in previous... Uh, videos I haven't really shown how I do that so I'm gonna do that in this one so, so here you can see I made it about six and a half inches long um, which it'll get bent like I said before um, this is a tube cutter a pipe cutter and basically you line up there's a, a, a cutting wheel that I line up with the black mark that I'd made on the pipe and you tighten it up and you turn it around a few times and then you tighten it some more and keep turning until it eventually just breaks off and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the end of it a little bit wider so it'll fit in the hole that's in the uh, shade part of it a little bit better because it wasn't quite a little bit tighter of, of, of a fit now what I'm doing is I'm, before I bend it, I'm going to put these, uh, I put those wires through just so that uh, I don't have to try and feed it up through the, through the pipe after it's been bent. And this little spring thing here that you see is what I use to bend the, the, the tubes with. And basically it helps to stabilize the entire uh, tube while you're bending it so you don't crush it. It does get a little bit crushed and... I wish I had a better way of doing this, and I, I do, but I just don't want to take the time to do it. You can fill them up with water and then freeze them and then bend them, and they work pretty well. Or you can cap off the ends and fill them with sand and then uh, bend it. There's lots of different ways to do it. Or you can fill it with hot wax, too. So anyway, um, the uh, uh, here I am putting the shade on, and basically I'm just going to super glue the shade to the tube here in a little bit and uh, the wires I'm going to I have this uh, LED that I got off of a set of fairy lights and I'm just burning off the little enamel that's on the wires and uh, I have to test it to see which one's the positive which one's the negative that way I get them hooked up right and there we go now I know which one's the switch and whenever I use these kind of wires, the wires that you see that's in the lamp are from an uh, Ethernet cable. Uh, they have brown, orange, blue, and green, plus the white ones with the stripes of the same color on them. And um, whenever I use these kind of wires, I always use the white wire for the ground on these. That way I keep those consistent. And then the brown one, I can, whenever I hook them up to whatever I'm hooking them up to, I'll know that the brown, for instance, in this, in this instance is for the, the, um, lamp. And, um, but anyway, the color is the positive and the white is the, uh, ground or the negative. And I've taken a couple pieces of, um, uh, heat shrink tubing 
to protect them once they go inside so they don't short out with the metal tube and with each other. And basically I'm just soldering the LED onto the ends of those wires. And um, then I'll, I'll pull the entire thing through and into the, the shade. And I use the torch to melt or to shrink the heat shrink tubing. It was a little bit of a challenge to get those in there because of the dimensions of everything, but I, I had to just go real slow and made it through and had to bend some wires to make it fit, but it fit. And now I'm testing it to make sure that it still works, that nothing got shorted. And there you can see it light, lit up. Now I'm just going to super glue it into place down into the hole and then I'll fill it up with a little bit more super glue around the edge just to kind of fill it in and make sure that it stays in place. You may have noticed that I've uh, changed my mat cut the back from to the back side I, the other side was getting real dirty and torn up so I just switched it around the other side anyway um, what I'm gonna do here is I if many of you may remember that I had made these domes for a previous for the for the telescope that I made these are some leftover ones and I'm just going through to find some that are about the same size as the lampshade and um, I have these copper ones, they have a little copper in it, so I'm just going to try a few of these out just to see which one would look better as the uh, as a lens that's in, that covers up the LED. And uh, they all had some bubbles in it, which helped to diffuse the light a little bit, so I wasn't discouraged by the fact that there was bubbles in them. Um, it's really hard to tell what they look like from this angle, but... Um, one of them is a prism shape as well and then the copper one I liked the way it looked but it was just too yellow and I wanted it to be a little bit brighter and I ended up going with this one here which is the prism shaped one it kind of made the light look a little bit better when it was shining so now basically what I'm going to do is put that in place and just super glue it into into uh, into place just to hold it in place there yeah, I say place a lot. <laughs> and I'm using a binder clip to hold it up so that it doesn't, so it's easier to do. And here I've just got some old copper gears. Uh, I've actually painted them copper. These are plastic gears from old VCRs and other machines that I had. And the one piece that you see that's still there is from a mold that I have. It's a clock face, and it's, you probably can't see the numbers on it, but the there's a the clock design around there and what I did was I uh, off camera I kind of uh, filed down a couple of the or the edge of it so that I can bring the wires out from those from where they're at right there and what I'm doing I don't know why I did this uh, I was gonna wrap it with this string just to make it look like it's a cupboard cord but it took so much to do so little and so I just scrapped that idea and kind of just uh, it was a waste of time <laughs> but anyway here I am just gluing it into place and uh, then what I'll do is I'll take the uh, the the clock face part there and just glue it to it with the the wires coming out in between the gears and the clock face instead of down on the bottom that way it's not I wasn't trying to set it uh, on the cord coming out on the on the floor it would be coming out from the center of the base so anyway um, that is my floor lamp that's going to be going into my book nook and I ended up having to bend it a little bit more here just so it wouldn't fall over it kept falling over when I tried to light it up uh, anyway I'm gonna turn off the lights here and make sure that it still works which it does um, there you can see it lights up nice and bright. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, let me know what you think in the comments below. 
And uh, as always, have a better day, as I always say.